Hey guys, Cork here. So one thing I've noticed, uh, especially with Classic Wilds growing popularity, is that there's a lot of guides out there for different classes. You know, leveling guides, PvP guides, PvE guides, profesh profession guides even. And one thing I've noticed with um, Hunter guides in particular is that they tell you all the things that hunters can do, but there's very few resources actually sh taking you step by step um, through the hunter class mechanics. One thing that's important to keep in mind with hunters is that while you have all these special uh, tools on your tool belt, what really makes hunters powerful is how you can bind the different tools together to achieve a specific result. And there are some certain fundamentals that are very intuitive to understand, but what's really going to make you stand out as a hunter player is combining these together, especially in group settings. And a single hunter can completely change the entire dynamic of uh, five-man dungeons in particular. In fact, as far as CC goes, many times all you'll need is a hunter. Um, but I'm going to start from the very basics. Hunter is probably my favorite class in Classic WoW, or Vanilla WoW. I've been playing it for probably, I guess combined, probably five years now. And I never get bored of it, simply because there's so much going on underneath the surface. Hunters get a bad rap because they're very easy to level and easy to play on the surface level. But they probably have one of the highest skill caps as far as PvP and um, PvE is concerned. So what we're going to start off with, the first segment is going to be about uh, how, you, how your auto shot functions when attacking from range. And then we're going to take that into how, how hunters kite and how they're probably the best kiters in the game up there with frost mages and then um, finally we're going to talk about how your abilities impact your auto shot and how your rotation flushes out in a pve setting so there's a very intuitive way i got my pet here hopefully he's not too distracting there's a very intuitive way of understanding how your bow or crossbow works so i'm just going to send in my pet and let him tank and just pay attention to how my character interacts with their weapon so my pet's attacking. I'm going to begin my auto shot and just pump arrows into this. You can see there's three distinct phases for your character. You reload, take aim, and fire. I'll show that again. So load, aim, fire. Fire. So that's all there is to it. You can just stand here and auto shoot. It functions almost exactly like auto shot. However, you can see after I fire, I can move a short distance and immediately fire. Meaning that movement during a certain part of my ability rotation isn't interrupting the cooldown of my shot timer. So now that we understand intuitively what that looks like, I'm going to show you a tool that I use. It's called Yacht. It's this bar in the center of my screen here. Sorry, my UI is a little messy right now. And this doesn't change the functionality of my weapon whatsoever. All this does is give me a visual indication of what phase of my auto attack I'm in. And I'm just going to let this run while I do what I've been doing. And you can see how this add-on will track. There's no guarantee that this specific add-on will work in Classic WoW. However, it doesn't really matter what the tool looks like. They're all doing the same thing. So during red, I'm taking aim. White, it's cooling down. And when the red, when the, the take aim is, when the red bar is fully, uh, fully loaded, that's when I shoot. So there's a red, there's a uh, white cooldown phase, a red aiming phase, and at the end of the red phase is when you actually fire your arrow bolt. So we'll see this again. Red fire, white, cool down, fire. But what you need to understand is that when it's white, your cooldown is not interrupted. But you can't be moving or interrupting at all until the red bar is full. So I know I kind of rushed through that, but let me show you, show you again. So essentially, I can move as long as the white bar is visible. I can jump. I 
I can keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. But if it's red, and I move while it's trying to load the red, well, that was a little bit of lag. So essentially, as long as the bar is, as long as you're reloading your weapon, there's a cooldown phase that you can move without interrupting it. And the reason that slow weapons are best for hunters is that the slower your weapon is, the longer the white phase is. And as long as you're stopping the fire every time your white bar is full, you don't lose any damage. You're not interrupting your rotation whatsoever. So when it comes to kiting, and I kind of showed you an example there, but I'll show you just myself kiting, aspect of the cheetah for extra movement speed. You can fire, turn, and I'm not losing any damage in my rotation right now. But the slower my weapon is, the farther I can travel, the farther I can travel between each shot. So if you're kiting properly, you're not losing any damage, but you can still travel pretty far distances. So that's basic hunter kiting for you. And the reason that hunters are so good at kiting is because you can lose no damage while still covering great ground. And again, the slower weapon, the slower your weapon is, the farther you can travel between each shot without losing any damage. Combined with your aspect of the cheetah, which gives you increased movement speed, this essentially allows you to just maintain a large amount of distance between you and your target while not losing any damage from your auto shot. So now that we kind of understand how movement works, um, what does this mean for the hunter rotation? Well, using an ability acts similar to movement in that it interrupts the red part, the taking aim part of your rotation, similar to movement. But it doesn't interrupt the reloading phase, the white portion of your reload, at all. So what this means is that you want to use your abilities right immediately after you fight an auto shot. An auto shot. Simply because you don't lose any damage from your auto shot if you're using abilities during that time frame. So I'll show an example of using aim shot, using your some of your abilities. So most hunters will be using aim shot and multi shot. That's just, so will comprise most of your rotation. What they do is they add additional damage to your base attack. So think of it sort of like a mortal strike or a heroic strike with a with a little bit of a cast time. Um, so this gives you a lot of burst, and you want to be using these abilities without interrupting your auto shot timer, otherwise you're going to be clipping. So here I'm going to fire, I'm going to wait till it starts getting red, and I'm going to start casting aim shot. But it delayed my auto shot until I was done casting the auto shot. So I couldn't fire, even though the red bar was full, I could not fire my auto shot until my aim shot was done channeling. So to show you how to properly use it, I'm going to attack, immediately start casting aim shot so they're overlapping so there's minimal clip on my auto shot so the entire hunter rotation revolves around first off getting as minimal clipping between your casted abilities and your auto shot as possible so I'm gonna so for the next part you want the general rotation is you want auto shot aim shot auto shot multi shot using your aim shot and multi shot without clipping as much as possible on auto shot. And I'll show you what a burst looks like, which can be really satisfying in PvP if you get it off. Because essentially, with two auto shots, an aim shot, and a multi shot, you're essentially getting four uh, damaging abilities off in rapid sequence. And this Courser might actually be a little bit too uh, low HP to show you the full rotation, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull another mob here real quick. And this will work nicely because you can see the multi shots effect taking. So, again, I'm going to auto shot, aim shot, auto shot, multi shot. And there you have it. That's the basic hunter rotation. The next section will be talking about how pet, how to use your pet effectively, 
how to use feign death effectively, and then a trapping guide.